In this comparison video, we're gonna take a look at if you need an expensive lighting setup to make good looking YouTube videos, or if you can get away with a cheap IKEA or Home Depot setup. And, you know, some DIY rigging, like using umbrellas or garbage bags or whatever. We're doing multiple tests in different settings to check what the skin tones do and how the overall image looks like when using these different lighting setups. In the first test, for example, we're using these lighting setups against the black background to really isolate the color of my skin produced by these lights. Then the second test is using these two lighting setups in my own personal YouTube space that I use for my YouTube videos these days. And also we're gonna try to match both colors using a color card and check if we you know, eventually can get exactly the same results even though using different lights. So enough to talk about, so let's check what we're working with. So in June 2019, I started this YouTube channel and I didn't really know if I'd like it, so I didn't wanna spend hundreds of dollars on expensive lighting equipment. So I basically started out with a IKEA setup. So the things that I got was a $5 China ball, which is basically, you know, sort of a foldable, a foldable China ball that, you know, diffuses the light and spreads it evenly across the space. And for the bulb, I used a simple IKEA 5000 Kelvin lamp that I thought was the best deal I could find at the time. And it was. It only cost me about $15 in total with a little bit of cable and a E27, yeah, E27 uh, mount, which is this thing. As I started to record more videos and got more into YouTube and did more client work, I decided to invest in more uh, lighting equipment instead of renting it all the time. So I purchased a Godox SL60W, which is this 60 watt lamp. It's basically a chip LED lamp that is, you know, typically made for small video production and it works really well. It is decently sort of color accurate. It has a, I think an 85 or 90 CRI and it works just fine. But I wanted something that was more color accurate and more powerful. So I got my hands on the new Godox SL150 W Mark II. It's a 150 watt lamp that has a significant amount of output power and has a really high CRI of 95 plus. Well, that's it. So let's check what the comparison looks like and what we can do with a very expensive setup and a very cheap setup like that one from Ikea. All right, straight away when you look to this image, you'll see the color differences in the cheaper and the more expensive version. Yeah, so you see that the cheaper, the Ikea version, shifts to the green a lot more than the Godox version. And that's normal because, you know, there's a price difference. But if we move along down the, the color grading pipeline and we transform our footage from log to rec 709, you'll see that the, the color differences become way more noticeable. Now, this looks kind of bad, I agree. But if we use, for example, a color card or we mess with the colors, you can get it back to some degree. Let's see what happens. So right now I use the color card to match these two images together. And this is actually what you end up with. It's kind of interesting. The only thing that I noticed from this image in particular is that we miss some of the shape that it creates on the on the like the right like the camera left side of my face. Yeah on the on the Godox one you'll see that there's a lot more shape created because the softbox that I'm using has a honeycomb grid on it and that sort of allows me to direct the light straight onto my face instead of around me. And of course the China ball is round, it spreads the light evenly across the space. That means that, you know, the background is lit up a little bit more and, you know, you'll lose a little bit more of that flexibility you have with a softbox. So moving on, I did a slight sort of adjustment. So this is again, the same uh, color balanced um, clip that we used in the previous one. So raise the offset, raise the midtones, raise the highlights a little bit. And this is what we end up with. Still, I do prefer the left one by far because it creates a lot more shape, making it a lot more cinematic. This one, the right side, the Yakia one is, you know, it is nice, it's doable, um, and it definitely serves its purpose, but it is a lot, it looks a lot cheaper to me. All right. Now, moving on, going to, you know, my YouTube setup, you can see that the greenish yellow tint is more exaggerated when we convert it, as we talked about earlier. Moving on. 
Now it gets interesting. So I use the color card again to transform my footage to, you know, this like the standard, what the color should be like. And this is what you end up with. And this is kind of interesting. Again, you lose a lot of the shape, but since we have a background to sort of, you know, help fill the entire scene up, it doesn't look as bad as on a black background, in my opinion. So moving on to the balanced version, I gotta agree, it's not the best shot, it's not the best grade, um, but it, you know, it shows what what is possible. So if we check where we came from and what we end up with, you know, there's a lot you can do in, inside DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro and Final Cut, you know, as long as you know where the tools are and what kind of tools you need to use. So what do I think? Well, personally, I think if you are a YouTuber that, you know, solely wants to make YouTube videos or has a hobby that he wants to make a talking head portion for the video for, then a cheap lighting setup by IKEA is perfect, you know. Don't spend the money on a lot of this lighting equipment because once you start, there's no going back and you will want to, you know, buy more and more and more. But if you are like me and you want to sort of become a DOP, you want to create nice shapes with light and experiment with light, then investing in lighting equipment is fun because you can use it in your YouTube videos, you can use it in your client work, you can use it wherever and, you know, renting all that stuff can be sometimes difficult especially for the smaller ones it's nice to have your own lighting equipment so you you know you can accept the job instead of having to invoice like another 300 euros for the lighting equipment that you have to rent so it really comes down to what you want to do if you just want to make videos for youtube then you know the simple setup will work if you want to expand your knowledge if you want to expand your passion for videography maybe you know by using the lights then definitely invest in these lights because they can help you progress in your you know filmmaking career so that's it for this video hopefully you guys liked it i am on holiday on saturday i'm going to portugal so i tried to record another video on friday it's wednesday right now um to then upload next week so i can focus on the vlog or the video that i'm gonna make in portugal um completely without having to bring my laptop to Portugal and you know edit like some random video there so hopefully you guys uh, like this enjoy watching it my I already said that so if you did you know what to do subscribe but mostly like the video please and uh, I'll see you next Sunday thank you or if you can get or if you can get can you, in this video, in this comparison video, we're gonna take. Yeah, he's a shoe joint. In this comparison video, we're gonna take a look at if you need. Fuck, that was veel gelul, zeg. Tering jantje shoot, hey. Fucking heet ook. Oh, Jesus Christus. Christus.